We're joined today by Simon Mitchell, Managing Director of Southern Gold. Simon, thanks for your time. Good afternoon, David. Good to be here. Not often you can invest in a pure country play, but Southern Gold is definitely a country play. We are, and that's the first slide in the slide deck, right? All about South Korea, and it's all about precious metals exploration. So we focus on gold and silver. We're not distracted by tungsten or anything like that. Uh, so definitely a focus on uh, gold and silver. And to a degree, we're focused on uh, epithermal style mineralization, largely in the sort of southwestern corner of the country. How big is the opportunity in South Korea for people who don't know the mineral sector? Oh, the opportunity is, is, is amazing. Unique and amazing, I'd say. And it's partly because it's a bit of a time capsule. Uh, there hasn't really been any modern exploration there of any kind of significant scale since Ivanhoe were there back in the 1990s. So to, to, to a degree, Southern Gold is like the reactivation of that exploration effort from the 90s. Uh, and, and so we've got the right people on the ground. In fact, some people that actually are from those Ivanhoe days are in our team. So we're going back in. Ivanhoe made some discoveries, some high grade discoveries, and we're hoping to do the same uh, in due course. And the level of project generation you've been able to achieve mm -hmm. is pretty spectacular. Yeah, we've got a lot of projects. Sometimes people look at the map and go, gee, you've got a lot of projects. So I think, you know, sometimes I get asked, what, what's your flagship project? And I say, my response really is that we have a flagship country. And that is to say, you know, we are a country play. That's our flagship project. And we've got a number of prospects, which are those projects you see on the map. Now, uh, having said that, you know, some are obviously better than others. We've done some work on some, drilled some. We've had some mixed results. We had lower grade at one project called Wallyu, for example. That downgraded it. Uh, but then we've had some success in the field and others, like Docom, where we've got very high grade gold and silver, which we hope to drill on due course. How important is it to have a strong in-country technical team? Uh, it's critical and it's one of the things that I've been highlighting in my presentation actually is the fact that we have a Korean team on the ground and that, that's led by our executive director BJ Kim who's been a fantastic addition to the team. So yes, we've got a good group of young Korean bilingual geologists. That's taken us some years to build that capability, by the way. Something that I'm quite proud of as our, for our company in terms of how we've been able to establish that. It's probably taken in the order of three years or so to pull those people together. Uh, not easy to replicate, and uh, it gives us a really distinct advantage in country. I've noticed that occasionally foreign companies get a bit of an interest in Korea. They come in and work for a period of time. They'll often do it with expatriates, uh, you know, coming in and doing a little bit of work. But usually they leave with the tail between the legs after, let's say, 12 months or so, and so they move on to other things. Korea is unusual for the fact that you have to have perseverance, people on the ground, and the right technical people directing things. In terms of work and capacity to work during COVID and all the other restrictions that were evident in lots of countries, clearly that didn't stop you in your tracks from a work perspective. No, no, it hasn't. Look, you know, let's be frank, COVID has meant that it hasn't been ideal. <laughs> we haven't been able to get some of our guys on the ground there, but we do, because we do have that Korean team, we have been able to continue to keep our momentum there. So we've been drilling, we've been doing groundwork, soil sampling, mapping exercises and new projects. So the, the, the teams have been able to kind of keep our project generation work ticking over. Clearly, we would have been going perhaps faster and deeper in regards to that process if we had some of our guys on the ground there, you know, the experts from, say, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and so on. Uh, but we've been able to remotely sort of direct things to a certain extent, particularly with the drilling, and that's enabled us to keep things moving forward, which I think is not a bad outcome given the circumstances. What does 2021 look like from a news perspective? Yeah, so probably a little bit of more of the same in the sense that we'll have the guys out on the ground doing more groundwork, but we're hoping to be drilling Dokon over the next month or two. So we're a bit unsure about the time frame on that because we have to get some approvals in place. We also want to complete our soil sampling program in sort of the north of the project. But once that's done, and once we've got a fairly good handle on where we want to begin the drilling program there, uh, that, that should happen in the next, let's call it six to eight weeks. So that's uh, where we had very high grade gold and silver and rock chip, and we've got a very good trend, uh, very obvious in soil sampling that was done with gold, silver, arsenic, etc. So we've got a very good pattern emerging on that project. So that's something we want to keep working on. Uh, and 
In terms of going forward, we've got a series of what we call scout programs in new projects. So over the course of the next 12 months, we'll be going into new project areas that has never seen a drill rig before. So we've found usually pretty good indicators of mineralisation on surface, sometimes in some cases all grade on surface, and we'll be bringing the rig in for the first time to drill some of these vein systems. And that's probably going to constitute the next sort of 12 months or so. And how do you go access to rigs and assay labs and the like? Yeah, so we have a prep facility in country and we use assay labs in Asia and principally the one Intertech in Indonesia, but sometimes we use other labs as well. That's generally not a problem. I, I think the, the uh, preparation and turnaround on our samples, for example, is probably in the order of six weeks or so, which is probably pretty standard and similar to Australia. Um, in, in terms of some of the other uh, things like drill rigs, well, Korea actually manufactures drill rigs. Uh, so they're a big manufacturer of those sorts of uh, gear and we can get access to things like that quite easily. The challenge in Korea is getting good drillers. And that's one of the reasons why we did that deal at the end of last year or middle of last year with the Australian company called ADS or Sino Drilling Services. That's an Australian drill company that's operating in China. These are guys who understand North Asia and uh, are essentially moving some of their business across to Korea. And they'll be assisting us to really lift our game, if you will, in terms of meterage rates, recoveries and so on. They're advising the Korean company that we're using at the moment, and we've already had a major impact on their capability. And extremely well funded. By the looks of it, you could fund drilling campaigns for several years with your current cash position. Correct, that's right. So we've got basically several years of drilling activity ahead of us. Uh, so we're definitely not in the come raising type category. And in addition to that, we've also did that deal with the Sino, the drilling company, which they're taking some of our equity, uh, which is to the value of 1.1 million US, or let's call it 1.3, 1.4 Australian current exchange rates. And so what that tells investors is that Southern Gold's got sort of liquid capability, so north of 10 million Australian. So that's not bad for a 18, 19 million dollar company. Exciting times ahead for, as you say, a pure country play with a big pipeline of activity and a quality in-country team. Look forward to following the progress, Simon. Thanks for your time. Thanks, David. It's been good talking to you.